points in our test today. I have both glorified and been glorified. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that they had thunder. Others said, the angel has spoken to them. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the people of this world is passed out. Back to the matter that God hears our prayers. He hears every 
said we got a problem with it. But sometimes God says no. And you might think that uh, what he's saying no about, you should say yes. And I agree. I got a bunch of stuff that I and he said no to. But no is an answer. And no, no means that he was listening. Um, not now is an answer. And sometimes, you know, you don't like that to be put off or to be delayed or whatever it is that we request. But not now is an answer. And uh, when, uh, so when we pray, uh, too often in the church, we have been told and taught that as long as we pray, that God will answer our prayers. But the implication is that He will answer our prayers affirmatively in the way that we want it to. Lord, do me harm. Uh, one Lord, I want to you know, uh, fight, or whatever it might be. And we have this thing, but this thing that's called the ABCs uh, of prayer, I think it is. Ask, believe, and claim. A, B, C. Uh, but that's all, that's not scriptural. That's just something that sounds really cool and, and something to get people excited. But the reality is that when we pray, uh, depending on what, what our prayer is, if it's according to the will of God, then the answer is yes. But yes, uh, uh, and if it's not according to the will of God, then the answer is no. And one of the things that we want to say, well, that now I know if it's in the will of God, and the first step is to know the word of God, because God's word is his word. Um, and so backing into this, so going back to, to prayer and having our prayers answered, uh, when uh, when I I can say you, I can say come here, but I can say come here, right? And you know what I'm asking you to do. I could also do like this, right? Like like this, something like that. And you would you would you would know, right? I could also write it down. And give it to you and say, come here, right? And that's it. So there's different ways of communicating. And not, uh, not, uh, what happens very often is that people tend to think that because uh, they have prayed and they can hear that they can hear, that God has answered their prayer. But the reality is that your prayer is. Turn to first John, this is what the back of the Bible is. Let's just do this. John chapter, uh, first John, not John, uh, not the Gospel of John, but first John. There are these short books of John, it's what the back of the Bible is. Revelation. We're looking at first John. And we're looking at chapter 5. First John. Chapter 5. And in 1 John chapter 5, it says, uh, I'm starting at verse 14. 1 John chapter 5, starting at verse 14. It says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, capital H, referring, capital H referring to, uh, uh, First uh, John uh, chapter chapter five verse fourteen. It says, "Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, capital H, referring to Almighty right God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us." So that tells us that if we ask according to His will, that He hears us. We know that He hears us. So now the one that He hears us. It goes on to say, and if we know that he hears us, because we ask for it, whatsoever we ask, and if we know, once again, verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, what King James says, the desires that we have asked of him. In other words, when we pray, it says this is our comfort, that if we uh, uh, that if uh, we ask anything, but it's not, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't just say if we ask 
think, no, it's anything according to this term. So, what am I asking? Uh, what, how do you know what's according to this term? Well, again, his will, and God communicates to us just like we communicate to one another. We speak, we hand signal, or give some type of sign or signal. Or we write it down. Well, God is written down. Just, you know, now, once in a while, that comes to something like, for example, um, you know, I, I hear you, but but how does that work for, uh, for example, what I should wear today? Um, you know, many people don't pray and ask God what to wear. I think it's probably a good idea, but, uh, but many of us, um, and the reason why I think it's a good idea is because I've seen some people and what they have won. And it just, I just say, I wish they were free, but they came out of something like that. They're very easy to look at the But the point simply being that what happens is you say, well, the Bible doesn't tell me what to do. The fact of the matter is that it kind of does. Um, the idea is this morning, uh, Sister Burwell says she put on this dress just to talk out loud. This is not right to fail. She got, she got dressed this morning. She put on this dress. And when she looked at herself in the mirror, she said, this is not the dress for today. Right? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Okay. And so, so she shaked down. Now, one might say that, well, what does that have to do with God directing me into what to wear? In your heart, in your spirit, something said, don't wear this. The fact is, you said, but I didn't pray and ask. No, 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 no. I know that you didn't consciously, deliberately, intentionally fall on your knees, oh, Father, up in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, I know you didn't do that. But in your spirit, where the Holy Spirit lives, in your heart, where the Holy Spirit lives, it was, it was actually, it actually wasn't you. But it was the Spirit of God that lives in you, that spoke to you and said, yeah, not to me. That's all I'm saying. And, that's, and, and so to God, we go, yes, Lord, I, I hear you loud and clear. I thought it was my own judgment and, you know, so and so and so. But Lord, I realized that I got the dress. So something in me must have told me I could wear it. But it was now that Do you see what I'm saying? But something within me said that, yes, you do have the dress, but not today. So we pray, and this is what I want, this is what it's bringing us back to the scripture. So we pray very often, not even consciously realizing that we are praying. We are asking God to lead us. We are uh, unconsciously, but we're asking God. And in the case, and, and our unconscious prayer does not begin like our conscious prayer. Our conscious prayer begins, dear Lord, our Father in heaven, right? Or Father up above, or whatever it is that we start our formal prayer. But our unconscious prayer, this, the communication that goes on between us and our Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit is not, does not start in that same way. It simply says, and we don't even realize it, what should I get today? Holy Spirit. Well, we don't realize the same Holy Spirit, but what shall I get today? And we look and say, okay, this is blue and a green and a black. Is that anything I'll get today? The Spirit of God doesn't doesn't say the Spirit of God, as far as you're concerned, you're not even talking about, but what happens is the Spirit of God doesn't say that not saying anything or you don't hear anything, he's saying something. He wouldn't say it. But when you say I'll be in blue and something in you said, whoa, whoa, that's the spirit of my body here. So we are in constant communication with the Lord. We think that it's our conscience. How can it possibly be our conscience when we do something that are unconscionable? We say some things that are just unconscionable. We wouldn't do it normally, but we find that. So it's not our conscience. The Holy Spirit is not our conscience. The Holy Spirit speaks to our conscience. And then, of course, we have. It's just a 
just flows. And, and don't misunderstand. That's not the twist of the day. That's from the day four. It's all part of God's plan. And if there's a lesson for us, there's a lesson for us. Some lessons we don't have to learn by going to the plan. You imagine. I'll let it for a second. Could you imagine what would happen if you had one that stress, right? <laughs> right, so you and the Spirit of God just let you. You might have thought it was you just thinking that, it, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about it and saying, and you know where that, that this is going to happen, and then you're going to have to do this and so on and so forth. So, and then, like, you know what, like, just let it get right. And this happens in a lot of all the time. It is not that we are the Bringing us back to scripture, the reason why I brought this up is because Jesus said, he's talking to the people and he said, now my soul is troubled. Uh, verse 27, he says, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. So he's talking to the man at this point. He's saying, listen, this is the moment that I, uh, that God has set me down here for. I am about to begin uh, that long walk to the cross. He said, well, what should I say? Father, get me out of this situation. He said, no. For this purpose, I came to this hour. And then immediately, in the very next verse, he prays. It doesn't say that Jesus prayed. It doesn't say that he bowed his head and closed his eyes. And it also doesn't say uh, he fell on his face and lifted his eyes up to glory. There are other places where it's empty. But how do we know he prayed? In this next verse, because he begins, Father, oh, glorify your name. So, am I talking to you? Father, glorify your name. I'm like, look at you, bro, but am I talking Father? So, so you see what I'm saying? So he prays just like that. And all he says is the simple form of his Father, glorify your name. And what happens when Jesus prayed the forward, the Bible says that. God spoke. It says in verse 20, yes. And a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it. That's God responding. And we God answered Jesus in this particular thing. Because remember, uh, if folks say, well, God always answers prayers. Uh, yes, but he always answers our prayers as well. But like I said, no, it's an answer. But in this case, God responded immediately, and God responded uh, verbally, audibly. He responded audibly so that others could hear it as well. And this is why Jesus said, uh, why it says in verse 29, but the other one of the people who stood by and heard it said that it had done Others said, angel has done But what did Jesus say? Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for me, but for your sake. So, so Jesus said, Listen, I didn't even speak for me. I already know the answer to my prayer. I already know I'm confused. But this voice came for me for your benefit, for the benefit of those that were, that were around that verse. Okay? And then, and, and so that's why I want to just keep that our mental life just so that we see that it's important for us to realize that. If we belong to God, if we have children of God, if we consider ourselves saved as Christians, all of the things that are considered and so on, uh, then we automatically have an open line to all my children. And when we go into our formal prayers, when we go into our, you know, our uh, closet, so to speak, and we go into pray, that's what I call formal prayers. But whether you realize it or not, you've got an open line to God Almighty 21 hours, 70 days only. Now, here's the important thing to understand. In fact, what I think, think of it like this. Think of it like a, like a phone call you made to the Lord, but you didn't hang up. What I mean by that is like that, what do you call it? What? Oh, what? 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 Right? 
when you have your cell phone and you have to sit and you take the job so not, and it's over, right? Whether you realize it or not, those on the other side of that phone phone are listening and 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 can get everything you say. Well, think of it like you got an open line, right? an open bar phone to the Lord. So that even when you get up off of your knees, Sister Melody, and said, and so bless mommy and daddy and sister and brother, if you say amen, and you think you come up, no, 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 no. All you've done is put uh, is walked away from the phone, but the call is still open. The line is still open. You need to think like that throughout your entire life. And I believe, I pray that it will help you to be more mindful of some of the things that actually come out of your mouth. Uh, uh, that some things that you may not know for you. So you, 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 I had, in fact, this is a true story. There was a member of the church several years ago that passed away. Uh, but before I They found uh, that he had long changed. And it was one of those situations where when he found out already had stayed. So it was determined. And the doctors believed that they didn't even operate on the thing, whatever the x ray, whatever they did, they saw it. And it was just really bad. And, and so, and he, God knows that I love that guy. And I thank God for him. From the time that he found out that he had uh, this terminal condition to the time that he passed away, I got a phone call. Turned into a boy passed away. Uh, I got a phone call from someone. It wasn't him. And obviously, it wasn't a friend of his. And I say that because the phone rang. I picked it up and said hello. But but they didn't respond, so I waited to the phone. But I heard, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. They called. I did pick up. It went to voicemail. That's what it was. It went to voicemail. And it just stayed open. And the thing was that the people, the two, people, I guess it would sound like they were going to talk. The thing they said about this brother, like another, I always told this, and I don't know, yeah, no, there's no way to do because this, and just, it was just horrible. It, 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 it was just horrible. I just, that, it was just horrible. And they never, and so I'm simply saying they didn't realize that they had made a call and that the alarm was over. Now, in this case, it will go to my voicemail. But the point is that God does not listen. And so he's listening in. Even when the conversation is not related to God, even when we're not talking to him directly, even when we're not talking to him directly, not talking about him, not, not talking spiritual at all, regardless of the line is always open. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, as an example, uh, the Bible says that uh, when Jesus walked on the foot and he said, well, let me come out here with you. And he tried out the boat and he began to walk to his feet. The Bible says when he began to sing, he cried out the foot help. And that, in essence, was a prayer. And he said that God, that Jesus immediately reached out the back of his hand and his name was the body of God and the next kind of stuff. The point simply being that there is always an open line. And there are times when we do not have the time to say, Lord God, we have the time to say, Lord help. That's a prayer. And we are, it's a prayer because number one, we're talking to God. And we are anticipating uh, an answer. The, the thing to keep in mind is that that prayer, along with all the other prayers, are not being, are not going to prison. They're not going to prison. But they're finally got them like God's like, all right, I'll oh, say something that's going to turn the next So that's not the way it works. But the fact that we have to get the power of all the time. All the time, 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 all the 
So that's a great comfort to Jesus in this case. He said, I prayed to the Lord and I said to him, uh, glorify your name. And God told Jesus in front of everybody, said, I have glorified and I will glorify again. And so, you know, I'm going to uh, carry on. Jesus, if you know this, it doesn't end the prayer with in Jesus' name, amen. Well, in the name of God, so no, but it's amen. What, what, amen at all? He just speaks to the Lord, says, so Lord, glorify your name. And then he goes on. And I'm saying that to say there are times when we, when we think about prayer, we think about formal, uh, 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 exclusive, uh, traditional prayer. But just understand that you don't have to begin your prayers in some special way, or for that matter, in your prayer in some special way. Uh, the fact that man, just make sure that you are con in constant communication with God. Just make sure, and, and have to do some people might think you're crazy, but every now and then, like you hear somebody say, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, I'm sure that that's what And, and I'm going to speak for all of them, maybe not too much, but I've said it myself. Speaking for all of them, what's made by They are really saying, Lord, not, it's not just the, uh, see, that, that, that kind of lends itself to that using the Lord's name in vain type of thing. But they're not using the word name, man. They're really saying, Lord, I'm glad that's all. Lord, let this be quick. I had some fun work on this quick this this past week. And I was like, Lord, let it be painless. And she said, she said, oh no, it, it doesn't get over. And I didn't want to do that. I said, Lord, let it be painless. I, I wasn't talking to you, and you know, the fact that I said it out loud, I can see how you can get how you can how you can be um uh this 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 bad, but no, I'm not talking to you. I was saying, Lord, let this be over quick. Just to end that story, it seemed like it was an hour, it was it was a So as you wrote the Bible, just do for this moment. And listen, and don't work. Because if you're like me, when God shared this with me and opened up my eyes to the number of years ago, I was like, man, I didn't realize I had it. I didn't realize I had a button on. So Lord, let me explain what you heard when I was over here over 10 minutes. And we don't need to. Thank God for that. Thank God for the service of the Spirit. And so, uh, so, but going forward now, I'm just fine. So, why did I say that first time? Yeah, before I, before I say something uh, 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 about somebody behind their back, why did you do more than that? I don't know what I said about this. I don't know what I said about this. All right, this is the uh, So Jesus says, tell them that God uh, be well before I say that. That's what I mean. That, that's what I mean. And then it goes on to the verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the evil of this world is to cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, then draw all people to myself. This he said, signifying by what a death is the God. Okay, so if you went over it, we sing the song in the service, we might sing this one. Uh, lift them up. Uh, and he said, and this is where it came from. He says, if I divide the death from the earth, I'll go on and it's me. Uh, and when he said, this is in verse 32, people that think they exalt him in the sense of like worship and praise. But what Jesus is referring to is being lifted up on the cross. And that cross means so much to us now and to others. That uh, that is the drawing that, that he uh, that he is referring to. That in addition to the prayer. But we know that from this point going forward, it started it started off well, with right? the down to the fast uh, He says that judgment first 
So if you can see in the spiritual realm, uh, if you can see this room that we have now, it might sound funny, it might sound a little bit exaggerated, but I don't believe it is. I honestly don't believe it is. If you can see in the spirit realm, uh, uh, that would be, you know, like you say, well, I got angels and heaven around me and all of that. So if you can see in the spirit realm, you would see demons trying to shake the, 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 the raptures of this building, trying to, and you would see them battling with God's angels because God said, no, no, you're not. No, the answer is no. No, uh, again, uh, it may be that detail, or it may be simply, as we read in the book, as we read in the book of Job, that Satan went to God. I'm sure he does it every single one, every one day in the Bible. He goes to God and says, Lord, uh, I think God says to him, you know, to where, you know, where you come from. He said, I'm going to go from when they ever see right in the Bible. And God said, well, I can consider coming down to chapel. He said, yeah, I can sit there, but you got me again. You have a protection to the chapel. And God said, that's where you come from. The day that the day that Satan went to God and said, God, I'd like to destroy the world right now. And God said, but look at what God. God said, yes, that's fine. I'm going to, I'm authorizing the destruction of the Twin Town. But here's the thing, and I'm making up the thing, but it's a Saudi, Bob, Jane, Mark. Though they worked in that building, they were in every one of them since such a time. They are not too. They are not too. Uh, 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 u
every single person in the community, every single person that died in the World Trade disaster, every single person that died as a result of COVID, every single person that died as a result of AIDS or whatever else, or just, you know, just woke up or you know, went to bed and didn't wake up. Every single one of them died because you not really see what they know about what they do. The God that you serve, uh, the Bible says, kills. And the, Bible, the, the, the God that you serve, the God that we serve, is a God that not only uh, we, we read. If we're reading now in the book of Exodus, so we know that that whole situation. All of the pharaohs, this, all of the all of the pharaoh's army was drowned in the sea, right? And say, so, but yeah, but but they were drowned because they were wicked. Right? And, and, uh, there was some, uh, there was some uh, an Israelite, some Jew that died. That's right. We had some love that see love that nobody, 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 nobody leaves this earth without God saying okay. There's a guy that uh, there, there, there's a guy that from this world is called Mark this is uh as you as you uh, Moses. In Exodus chapter 4, speaking of Moses, 
And it's telling Bolton that I want you to go and lead to bring my people out of Egypt, right? And so uh, Moses is not really about the God of Egypt. And he said to the Lord, listen, uh, I'll, I'll start at verse 10. I'm reading Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. So Moses said to the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. He said, but, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. You know, I'm not a good speaker. Why would you send me and you know call me? I don't have the talents, I don't have the abilities of one that that one of me think of as a leader. And the Bible says in verse eleven. So the Lord said to him, the Lord says to Moses, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? In other words, the Lord is saying, Who made your mouth? Who made those that are blind? He didn't say, Say, He said, I do. He said, Who made those that are mute, can't speak at all? Satan didn't do that. No, I did that. The Lord said is taking credit for that. He says, uh, the blind, uh, or those that see, does that. He says, I, the Lord, do all that. We have got so we can give Satan credit for it. Uh, and so this is why we finish the uh, life of the empire. We are uh, afraid that Satan is going to hear our prayers and that uh, he's going to be able to get you from as I've told you before, nobody in the scriptures, no one, Moses, I, uh, uh, Isaac, Abraham, none of them, uh, uh, the prophets, uh, Elijah, none, none of them have any more, Jesus, has, has any more, uh, I was going to say Jesus, I guess I can say that again, any closer to the Lord than you. My point is simply to say that others have different callings. Some have been called to be the president. Some have been called to be the janitor. But but God loves us all the same. And when I, and when I say that, I'm saying it because it's not a matter of God does this for this one and not for that one because he loves them. When we think in terms of uh, show the Bible said that Satan went to God in the first chapter of Job. It said that Satan went to God and God said that I have to consider my servant Jacob. I have to consider my servant Job. And uh, Satan said, Yeah, we got him on the protection of God. And then he got him on the protection of God. The first chapter they said that God said, All right, now tell you what. You can mess with Job, but don't take his life. Don't touch the pocket. First of all, don't touch the pocket. And then second, so don't take his life. Same exact thing happens to you. This is what I'm trying to make that understand. The fact is that Satan wants to kill us. He wants to destroy us. He likes us to be in And he's gone to God asking him all of the above. He's already asked God, Lord, can I give them kids? Lord, can I give them cancer? Lord, can I give them uh, 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 Lord, can I give him high blood? Lord, can I give him crickets and, and, and crickets and what's the thing that's called shingles? And, and can I give him arthritis? And, and God said to, to Satan, on some of those, okay, on some of those, no. And the one thing he said, okay, he said, okay, but it's not. If you're not gonna, it's not gonna cause you. You're not gonna take their life. So you wake up in the morning and try to get up and bring the stuff to your office and make some friends and come back to work. Right? Satan, when he's breaking that, it's a little baby or a lot of people just takes them to try to strip to your Right? So it's a lot of But but what happened was God said, Satan went to, to to the Lord and said, Can I can I cause them to have a a a, a, a bag? Not as fast as the bad may be what it is, but can I break his back? And God said, No, but you can give him some things to pay us. Good news. Everybody can preach about it on Sunday morning. And everybody can have everybody. Exception. 
Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Satan cannot do anything that has not been ordained and pre-approved by the Almighty God. So when you are faced with problems and troubles and uh, tortures, and you say, well, yeah, but I got some, you mean to tell me that that, 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 that sorrow I went through when my loved one passed away, or that uh, that heartbreak that I felt when my relationship fell apart, or that, that you know, my getting fired from every job, or not being able to find a job, uh, for every job. You mean that was all what's in my God? The answer is yes. If it actually happened, the answer is yes. How do I know that? Because if God is the one that happened, it's God is not just money. He is man. He's not just rocket. He's man. Now, what you might be saying to yourself is, well, why are we even thinking of that? And that's why I have to put it to me and say, I don't know. I would start by telling you to talk to him, but that don't mean that he's going to tell you. The fact of the matter is that that's where we have to trust him and say, what well, I don't know why you do this. But I'm trusting that it was for your glory and for mine. So, and although it don't feel good, although it don't, it didn't work out like I hoped it did, it, although I'm stupid in the in the one of our and so and so, but what I got trust, I got trust that this is your will. I know it's your will because it happens, it happens. Lord, why? If you choose to share it with me, that would be great because I definitely don't understand it. And by the way, remember that the line is still going to be perfect for you. So even if you say to yourself, I need to say, okay, God, you know, fine, it's a great one for you, but I know that you can still trust me. The line is up. He knows what you think, man, or what you So it's okay to just be honest with him and say, Lord, this don't make no sense. And if I guess it, this don't make no sense. I don't think, I think there's another way that this can be dealt with. In fact, God, here are my suggestions. So you can say that they're by me. And listen, I'm not being all good at it. I'm not being funny, trying to, trying to be funny. I'm telling you, it's okay to say, there's something to say, oh, you shouldn't question God because of that. Please, just please. The fact is, he's my father. I question my father. I question my earthly father. And sometimes he gave me an answer that I like, sometimes he didn't. But the fact is, I'm not afraid of God. And my, my questioning God is not out of challenge. I'm not challenging God. I'm just saying, Lord, like, like you got to be kidding I, I just, you know, I just did that. And now I got to do it again. Well, I just, you know, you know how much I was trying to avoid, you know, this. Lord, you know, Lord I've spread out all of the, the, the cards and the, this and that. And, 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 more pounds heavier than I was a month ago. I stopped eating meat. I stopped eating uh, carbs, the carbs and, uh, and whatever else. And I don't drink soda and stuff like that. I've done, and I'm still gaining weight. I don't get it. Go to the Lord and talk. I mean, I don't get it. But the answers you are not in touch by, that's up to God. All I'm simply saying is don't think for a minute that Satan had done something behind God back. No. Is all the plan and purpose of all my God. Our challenge is to trust Him so that even in asking why, we're saying, Lord, I'd like to, but I trust you. As a we're done just with this. Yeah, I think so. Right. So, so, as Jesus, so, so Jesus says in the garden of Gethsemane, uh, he says to the Lord, Lord, if it be your will, let this cut out of the way. But Jesus is saying, Lord, now that I'm here, even, even here in, in John, where Jesus says, what shall I say? The Lord save me from this hour? No, he says, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. But when that was, that was then, that was John chapter 12. But when Jesus was actually in the garden of Gethsemane, moments away from being arrested and stuff, what did he say? He didn't say, shall I ask the Lord not to? He asked the Lord. He said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. He was in a different position, in a different place. And just like you and me, there are times when you feel strong, like you go through something, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, and my experience has always been that during the day, I'm fine. When the sun is out, 
and you know i just you know i just had to pay some money for a repair or, or i had to do something that you know broke my heart or that troubled me or whatever during the day seems like it's you know like this man it's at night when everybody's gone to everything's quiet then it's it, then i suspect that the same thing that jesus and god they said it uh, and, and at that moment in prayer it's like